Here's your Tropical Storm Nate update. Friday afternoon, October 6th, I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals. There it is, right off the Yucatan, now with winds of 60 miles an hour. Notice how steadily it's moving north-northwest. 21 miles an hour. That's good in the sense that it won't allow it to strengthen as much as a slower storm would strengthen, and it also means it won't be able to develop as much of a storm surge as a slower storm might develop. Nonetheless, overnight it becomes a stronger tropical storm getting into the southern Gulf of Mexico on that same track, and notice that turn in the track sometime Saturday into Saturday night. The steering winds begin to shift it a little more north, Given that forecast comb, the center could make landfall anywhere between south of New Orleans over towards, say, almost Pensacola, Florida. Somewhere within that comb, Sunday is when it makes landfall. Now keep in mind, if it uh, goes farther westward, it makes landfall maybe in the middle of the night Saturday. If it goes farther eastward, landfall early Sunday morning, either as a strong tropical storm or as a minimal hurricane. That's why there are hurricane warnings for Baldwin County, Mobile County, and all counties westward into Mississippi. North of that and east of that, tropical storm warnings. And that's all based on the fact that it passes west of the News 5 area with the greatest impacts west. The impact of storm surge, the impact of wind, where the winds could gust to hurricane force in the areas in red, and then tropical storm force in the areas in blue. But along with that, keep in mind that wind blowing on shore for a storm that passes to our west will push water up into the rivers and bays. So if you are anywhere along the coastline of these counties, even if you're along a river that feeds into the bays or into the Gulf, you're under a storm surge warning because of the threat of rising water. Let's talk about some numbers. Now between Saturday and Sunday, the News 5 area, easily three to six inches of rain, which over two days is not bad. But some locations may see double that amount, depending upon how the storm lays out its feeder beds. So the threat of flooding will pick up basically Saturday afternoon. Winds can gust 40 to 70 miles an hour. So go back to the previous graphic I just showed you. 40 miles an hour, most likely inland, most likely east, far east of Mobile Bay, but around the Mobile Bay area and southern Mississippi, winds gusting 70 miles an hour. And then along our coastlines, four to eight feet of coastal storm surge. Now that's at the maximum. The exact amount of surge will depend upon exactly which way the wind is blowing based on where you live. Now here's a big picture projection. There's the center of the storm making landfall going steadily inland. We'll look at a little closer in a second, but keep in mind, it's either going to be a strong tropical storm or a minimal hurricane, but tropical storms have winds that could range from 40 to 73 miles an hour. That's a big range, and a tropical storm is simply a low pressure system from the tropics that doesn't have a cold front, it doesn't have a warm front, but it is a storm system. If it crosses that threshold of winds of 74 miles an hour, then it becomes a category one hurricane, and category one hurricanes can have winds up to 95 miles an hour. So it's very likely it'll reach that. It's not to say it'll make landfall at that same strength, but it is possible. It's also possible it could get a little bit stronger, but these are just the mysteries and the uncertainties of any storm that approaches our coast. Now take the forecast, hour by hour, eight o'clock Saturday morning, an east wind, partly cloudy. Most of us have a quiet start to the day. It won't really be that breezy, but through the afternoon, the winds gradually increase. We'll gradually see scattered showers and thunderstorms, meaning no one place is more likely to get it than another. And the stronger winds will start to be felt along the Mississippi Gulf Coast and the coastline of Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. But look how quickly things change after the sun goes down on Saturday. That low pressure system, which is Nate, either a tropical storm or maybe a hurricane, will be approaching the coast. That's 10 o'clock Saturday evening. So the farther west you are, the sooner you feel the impact and the greater the impact will be. Now, Sunday morning, 5 a.m., this particular computer model takes it across the Mississippi Gulf Coast, meaning landfall in the middle of the night Sunday, and then moving inland across southern Mississippi. All of Alabama and northwest Florida would be on the side of the storm where the steadier winds would be pushing water against the coast, up into Mobile Bay, up into Pensacola Bay, even into Choctahatchee Bay, where you would see storm surge. And keep in mind, places like uh, Dog River also Foul River would see the wind blowing water up those rivers. So again, if you live in a spot where you see storm surge ever, you've got to start planning for the what if. From Sunday morning, 
After the sun comes up, look how quickly that moves northward. So it should maintain a steady motion, meaning that by the middle of the day Sunday, the winds will begin to shift out of the southwest, and that's when the eastern shore of Baldwin County will start to see water being pushed up into, say, for example, Fish River. So the wind is going to control when the water starts to rise wherever you are. Many things we have to plan for this weekend. No one of them is you can be really specific about even more than 24 hours out, but we're going to watch for that threat of extreme wind, the threat of storm surge, flash flooding, and even tornadoes. Make sure you have a safety plan and keep up with what's going on. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.